Hello everybody and welcome to a new Photoshop tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you how to create this sort of vintage album cover look with a wave texture as well as some basic image and text manipulation in order to get all of this sort of composition looking very, very nice. What we're going to begin with is creating a new document. We're going to be using the same settings as the last album cover, which will be a 2000 by 2000 pixel grid with, three fat, with 300 pixels uh, DPI pixels per inch. So when creating this, what we want to do first is do some rendering. What we want to render is render clouds. Now, what we want to make sure that we have is background and foreground at black and white, so we get a black and nice black and white effect. So I re-render the clouds. Now, with this done, we want to duplicate it using Command J, and what we want to do is go on to Filter and Liquify. Now, with the Liquify tool, what we want to be doing is making sure that we have the four swap, which is this little icon right here, and we have these settings around 700, 90 pressure, and density of 50. You can experiment to see which effects work for you best by messing around a bit, but this, for this specific tutorial, we're going to be using these settings. So what we want to make sure that we do is that we sort of get rid of all the sort of smudginess of the clouds. We want to get some sharper lines in here looking wavy and as messy as we can. So get it to however you want to look, but I'm just going to quickly just show you that we can just move it around, get in some direction so it gives it a little bit more motion. And if you go here on the brush reconstruct options, you can either restore it all to the original or reconstruct it going back steps. So you start with the clouds and you can just go back to wherever you want. So this looks all right for now. So we'll be you pressing OK to have some of this. And what we want to do is duplicate again. So command J again, call this one um, uh, clouds two. And what we want to do is create a gradient map. Now gradient maps will just give this a gradient overload uh, over the top of it and we can choose different colors that we have. So here I have some presets which are sort of this sort of green forest look, a more like deeper ocean turquoise, more lava looking look. But for the purpose of the tutorial we're going to be using this sort of cream slash chocolate looking color. We're going to be messing around with the colors down here and we can obviously add some more colors to add or subtract different effects. But for just for the purpose of the tutorial we're going to be using just something that looks a little bit like this in order to replicate this sort of look here that we have. Ooh. So on this one, that we, what we want to be doing next is uh, selecting both of these layers. So hold command as you select both layers. We duplicate again with command J, right click and press merge. And now we have this layer here that we can now edit around with. Now with this on, what we want to be doing is then adding a color halftone. So making sure that down here, we have both our things as black and white. We go on to filter, filter gallery, and go on to color halftone, which it will be under sketch, sketch, and color halftone, which is here. For me, I've chosen the sizes and constants too, but you can keep it as however you want, however you want it to look. But for just for the purposes of the tutorial, we're going to keep it as this. Press OK, Ooh, duplicate it first, and then apply the filter. Press OK, and we're going to be double clicking on this gradient. We want to drag this little blend if section at the bottom of the blending options and drag it down to a color that we sort of like. So just for this one, around 66 looks good. So what we want to do again is select both of these, hold command, select both, select merge layers. And now we have this little gradient here. And now another thing we can do is add some noise. So as you can see, we've got the half tone. If we add some noise, we can make it look even more velvety and more organic. And with that part of the tutorial done, we can now move on to adding the text and the image. So from the last section, what we want to be doing is we want to be create, like organizing our layer a little bit. So what we want to do is unlock this previous layer, select all the layers apart from this top gradient one, which is this one here. We want to create a folder so we have all this organized and just call this um, background assets. So now we have all our assets here. And if we want to edit it later, we just come back to that. So now to get this sort of image border and text, what we want to first want to have is manipulate our image. So we just select this image that we have here with my friend Dima. We can just resize this to wherever we want. Make sure it's all proportionate. On some versions you have to hold shift, some other versions of Photoshop you don't have to hold shift. But to get it all centralized, what we want to be doing is we want to create some new guide layouts from view and new guides. The first ones we want to create are two by two centimeter, which is where the image is going to fit in. So we extend it, try and keep the image as centralized as possible. So just increase the size a little bit. That looks about right. And we're going to use the marquee tool by pressing M, 
highlight in this area, copy and paste, and we have this sort of centralized image. Now to get the border, we have to create a new guide layout again, go 1.5 on all of them. And with this, we can just create a new, new layer, use the marquee tool again with M, select, and what we want to do is foreground color. The one that we want is this one right here. We fill that in and now we have the image. Now to sort of get the thingy to look consistent and more or less the same, what we want to be adding is another gradient layer. So we do another gradient map and we add it on this one. We can just edit the amount that we want. Oop. So you can move the little sliders around, add some more, reduce some. It's just for the purpose of the tutorial, we'll be leaving it for this. Uh, let's change the color to... Oh. Change the color to this, FFE61. There we go. Now, with that one done, we're going to be adding in some text. So what we want to do is uh, start with a new text, go for Century Gothic, bold around 62, and uh, we'll just write down his name, which is Dima. Select the color, which is obviously this one that we have right here. Oh, there we go. Now, most text that you usually get will come out it looking a little bit like this. So if we go here on character, most text that you get will look a little bit spaced out. What you want to go is here on the spacing section. Just type in minus 100 to have it all scrunched up and looking nice. And we just want to go and duplicate this. Duplicate, change the color of it to the sort of darker one. Change the layout order. And now you have both of these looking nice. So rasterize both of these. Right click, rasterize type. Align it. Make it a little bit bigger if you wish. And what we want to do is we want to align the, this part of the A up to the part of the 2 centimeter. Merge both of these together. Use the marquee tool. Stretch it out. Uh, use the transform tool and adjust it. Align it a little bit. Press Command D to deselect and enter and then deselect. And now what we want, just copy and paste. Command C, Command V. Press Command T again to go and transform it. Rotate it and hold shift so it's all proportional. 180 degrees. Move it over to the next section. Use the use the mouse or your keyboard to adjust it slightly and press enter to, de to deselect the whole thing. Now we want to just move this layout down to the bottom underneath this image so we have this sort of offset behind the image sort of look. And if we want to make this image look a little bit even look even more vintage, what we want to do, we want to obviously add a half tone. So if we change the color back to black down here, we go filter, filter gallery, change the half tone again. Now we have this sort of vintage half tone look. And obviously to add the noise, we like as we did before, we just go and add noise. This time you can add a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on how much you want. For this one, we could go for 13, it'll look cool. And there you have it. You have pretty much the same sort of style with the text in both sides. You can change sizes and colors, and you pretty much have this sort of vintage looking effect. And to get these little text site on the sides, it's just using the font face courier, and you can just add it and return it like you did with the other ones. And that's pretty much the rest of the tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe if you are looking to do more, more projects in this sort of style, and stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.